Yvonne Stupak, you know, studio military analyst, former Asnet EU officer. Hello, Yvonne. Um, hello, studio. Nice to be with you. Hello. The question. Will the war, be it frost, or tends to turn towards a, you know, a global conflict, or any other mm -hmm. way you see? Okay, if we are talking about uh, this particular war, I mean uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine, I think in period two months from now, it will remain the same situation, almost the same, plus minus the same situation. I mean, uh, different types of... Uh, conflicts on different types, I mean, uh, different uh, types of fronts, I mean, maybe Eastern Front, Southern Front, maybe right. we will see some other different fronts, I mean, um, Kherson region, Zaporiz Zaporizhia region, Donetsk region, but generally, situation will remain the same, maybe with some different in intensity of uh, waging war, but almost uh, remain the same. The fact that the West is slowing down the transfer of weaponry, is that even the fact? Uh, I do believe that Western countries will support Ukraine till the end, I mean, till the victory. Till the victory. But, but, yeah, but, no, but at the same time, uh, Western countries, they had some problem. I mean, what kind of problem? A lot of countries, they've got politician poly politics yeah but not so much of countries have got uh leaders so leader and the politic it's a uh, sometimes two different process <laughs> maybe some different uh, considerations they are not allowing they are not adopting some bills which allows to support ukraine with cutting age uh munition cutting age uh, equipments but I think now uh, tendons that Ukraine will be provided with uh, different types of very uh, specific um, equipment, heavy, 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 heavy equipment, shells, projectiles, I mean, maybe uh, also uh, combat jets. We are expecting very much for to receive combat jets, maybe in four months maximum, uh, four months period so and, and also uh, i would like uh, to explain that, that from my point from my point i see that a lot of uh, foreign politics uh, foreign leaders that now they have more mm, they have more ability they have more courage to support Ukraine uh, in front of uh, Russia so, yeah finally finally because instead of mm, Instead of Russian threats uh, of using nuclear nuke weapon, etc. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, well, you, I don't think you can say much good about a politician that finds courage only when someone is waving, you know, uh, a, a nuclear club right in front of your nose and says that I'm gonna I'm gonna burn this ground to zero ground if you are not going to give me Ukraine because that's what this outdated Tsar of Russia says. And, and this is maybe not the courage, and it's the necessity that finally becomes obvious to European politicians. Finally, don't get me wrong. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. But it could be done much faster. Uh, I understand. But um, look, I, I understand. The European, uh, Europeans have got a lot of different problems uh, instead of, uh, except of Ukrainian war. Uh, inflation, uh, migration, uh, election, election campaigns. So, 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 so uh, they are um, involved in this such of this kind of problems instead of Ukraine. So, uh, we are very thankful to our Western uh, allies, uh, Western friends, to supporting us even with those small numbers of munition, but nevertheless, it's very useful and it's very painful for Russian soldiers and uh, especially for Kremlin. I'm, now I'm talking about Atakam's uh, missiles. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
But you know, uh, returning back to Europe and, and politics and politicians, I believe if you want to end the migration crisis, it's not necessary to wait until Putin will uh, wage a nuclear war and to kill us all. Maybe there is a reason and a way to do it a little bit faster to let Ukraine win. But, but I read you, I understand that you're grateful uh, uh, for, for what you have, and you are obviously having more. But how Ukrainians are doing now, consider what you said. What's, what about the counteroffensive? What's going on on, on the streets? How people are feeling, do you know? Okay, uh, what about on the ground? Look, our co counteroffensive operation now is going, uh, is ongoing, ongoing, still ongoing. It's uh, lasted for, for about more than 100 days. But we've get, we've, but now we've got some uh, gains. Uh, for example, the Polish region and now the, our soldiers uh, trying to keep their positions, trying to keep new positions, uh, trying to break through enemy lines yeah. because of lane, enemy lines. They're equipped with lot, lots of mines, uh, land mines, anti tanks mines, uh, anti personnel mines. Uh, what else? Uh, for today, we've got one good news from uh, Kherson region uh, now, unofficially, but we've got confirmation that our soldiers, Ukrainian army, uh, armed forces, are uh, trying to establish new position uh, on uh, previously occupied regions, and we have. Uh, we have a vision that maybe in one month's time it could be a new front for Russian Federation. So just uh, remember it. Kherson region, it's maybe second front for Russian Federation. Slava Ukraini. I mean, this is a great news. The, uh, I hope aiming to that. Winter is coming. Ivan, yeah, keep your fingers crossed. You know, well, don't feel, I need, I don't, you have Zaluzhny. You don't have, you don't have to have cross your fingers. He's heading Russian heads to them. And, well, he will be continuing, I believe. But let me uh, get back to our muttons. The winter. Could you please try to forecast the course of hostilities for this winter? What, when, and how? Because is the winter is good? Are you, do you think that the army is waiting for the frost or is it bad at the moment? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, Russian uh, armed forces and the Kremlin, they're waiting for winters and they do believe that winter is the main or yeah, main ally of Russia. Yeah, frost, a lot of frost. Yeah, and well. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think that Russia will continue uh, its tactics uh, from the previous period. I terror. mean, attacking um, yeah terror, uh, attacking uh, our infrastructure. I mean, central uh, heating supply, electricity infrastructure. Uh, also, I I think from my point, I believe that Russian will. Um, change scale of this attack. I mean, in large scale. What, what, what do you mean? Um, maybe they will also try to hit gas infrastructure, food supply chains, uh, for example, a place where grain uh, is stored uh, to, pro to provoke a uh, lack of bread on the market, uh, for example. And one more tactics maybe they will uh, focus focus on the regions, to attack regions with uh, kamikaze drones, with, uh, with missiles, with ballistic missiles, but only uh, focusing on regions with a weak anti-aircraft uh, defense systems. Because in Kyiv, it's no doubt, it's the anti-aircraft system, it's, yeah, it's very, very heavy. But for example, Kharkiv region, Dnipro region, uh, Odessa region, anti-aircraft defense is quite weak, but maybe they will focus in on destroying exact regions. But maybe Ukraine will have those F-16s by then, and we see what maybe happens then, maybe. But let me pass to my last question in this lovely conversation. Israel. Do you believe yeah. what happened in Israel? I mean, that brutal attack of Hamas, Israel, and Israel striking bang, back. 
Excuse me. Is this the start of the World War Three? You think? I think World War Three is already started in Ukraine because on the Ukrainian side is about fifty plus countries. On the Russian side is about three plus countries, three and a half maybe. Uh, but Israel and the Middle East, it's a new uh, hot point on the world map and russia federation obviously they liked they are enjoying uh, having so a lot of problems for united states for uh, european countries especially uh, terrorist terrorist attacks but especially pro-palestinian rallies uh, across all the europe and uh, they do believe they hope in russia and kremlin that uh, Western Europe and the United States will lose Ukraine, uh, and instead of uh, inst they will lose Ukraine in the focus and focusing more on Israel problems. And in this way, um, in this logic, Ukraine will um, have problems with supplying munition, projectiles, uh, a different type of armor, and the war will go to the end maybe in two months which i uh, uh which putin is waiting for well ivan um let them believe all they want that will be the disinformation choice of their own they are already decided their own fate because they are standing against the democracy and the, the world that is trying to get more civilized and they are trying to come over and make everything to degrade it they are the rot inside of our society, and it's just the question of civilization to survive. And I believe we all are on the right side. So thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you. Goodbye.